This program is intended to assist in training the operator of Hobart equipment and is a supplement to the instruction manual. The instruction manual provided with your machine has ML numbers printed on the cover. Be sure the ML number agrees with the number stamped on the data plate on the machine. For more information, always refer to the instruction manual. Replacement manuals can be obtained from your local Hobart office. In the next few minutes, you will learn operating procedures for Hobart WS-800 and WS-1000 waste equipment systems, including controls, setup and operational procedures, equipment shutdown and cleaning, and minor maintenance procedures. The costs of processing and removing waste materials continue to rise. Landfill space is scarce, and the use of food disposers has become highly regulated. Hobart WS Waste Equipment Systems provide a sanitary alternative for saving space, time, and money. Available in two sizes, Hobart Waste Equipment Systems quickly process grindable waste into a semi-dry pulp. The pulping process reduces the volume of waste as much as 80%. Hobart Waste Equipment provides significant cost savings in labor, materials, and waste removal expenses. Please note, for illustration purposes, the WS-1000 waste system is used throughout this program. Let's begin by reviewing the controls for Hobart WS waste systems. The main control panel is usually located on a nearby wall. Regulate power to the pulper by turning the main control handle to the on or off position. Operator controls are on top of the water press. The start button activates the water supply and fills the tank. The pulper motor, water press motor, and recirculating pump engage when the tank is full. The stop button turns off the water supply valve, pulper motor, water press motor, and recirculating pump. The optional clean cycle button activates a water spray to rinse the water press screen. After rinsing for a preset amount of time, the machine automatically shuts down. Warning! The pulper cover and the discharge chute are equipped with interlock devices. The pulper cover must be closed the discharge chute lid closed, and the discharge chute lowered before the machine will operate. To begin setting up the WS-1000 for daily operation, install the feed hood curtains. To install the feed hood curtains, open the feed hood and locate the curtain mounting hooks. They are attached to the upper portion of the feed hood. Line up the notches along the top edge of the curtains with the curtain mounting hooks. Press the curtain rod firmly onto the mounting hooks. Repeat this procedure for both sets of feed hood curtains. Then lower the feed hood into position. Now install the doors on the water press. Slide the lower end of the door into the groove at the bottom of the opening and gently press the door in place. Water press doors are held in place magnetically. After installing the water press doors, Close the lid on the discharge chute and lower it into position. Next, close the drain valve on the front of the water press and open the water supply valve. Move the main power switch into the on position. Then press the start button. The machine will begin filling with water. When the machine has filled to the proper level, the pulper, water press, and recirculating pump motors start automatically. Once the motors are operating, the system is controlled by the start and stop buttons. You are now ready to begin pulping waste materials. Hobart waste systems are capable of processing 800 to 1,000 pounds of waste per hour. For maximum efficiency, Feed waste materials into the pulper moderately, but not at a rate that overloads the system. 
Should the system overload, stop feeding waste into the pulper for a few moments to allow the system to clear itself. Improve pulping production by mixing the waste whenever possible. For example, combining corrugated boxes with food waste improves the efficiency of the pulping operation. Avoid bogging down the machine with excessively greasy items, breads, and pastries. These items are processed better when mixed with bulky waste like corrugated boxes. When processing large amounts of plastic material, skim the tank at least once per hour. Make sure the pulper water supply is always clean. The pulper will always perform better with clean, warm water. It is recommended to drain the machine of dirty water after every meal cycle. Some waste materials require special feeding techniques to most efficiently utilize the equipment. To avoid overloading, gradually feed heavy printed matter, computer cards, bulletins, computer printouts, and catalogs. Waste material delivered in plastic bags should be torn open and fed one at a time. Unopened bags may float and hamper machine operation. Do not feed glass or metal containers into the pulper. Both materials are highly abrasive and increase wear on the machine. Do not feed rags, mop heads, wooden crates, oyster or clam shells, or heavy uncooked bones into the pulper. The waste system cannot efficiently reduce the volume of these items. Waste materials with a glossy finished paper or a high glue content tend to create foam in the pulper tank. Excessive foaming can interfere with the pulping process. Intermittently feed these waste materials with other bulkier items like corrugated cardboard as one way to avoid excessive foaming. Chemical supply companies also supply special anti-foaming chemicals and metering pumps to help control excessive foaming. Clean the Hobart waste system at least once per day after the last meal cycle. Note, if daily cleaning schedules are not followed, the machine will become unsightly and odors will develop. A hose attached to a hot water spigot and a good quality high pressure nozzle should be available for cleanup of both the machine and the surrounding area. Save some paper trash or corrugated cardboard and feed them into the pulper at the end of the operating period. Bulkier trash items catch loose debris in the pulper tank and guide it through the water press. Allow at least 10 minutes for the final load of paper or cardboard trash to process through the system. Then press the stop button and wait for the pulper disc to stop. If your pulper has the clean cycle option, press the clean cycle button. The system processes the final load for 15 minutes, then automatically shuts it down. Warning, disconnect the electric power supply at the main control box. Place a tag at the disconnect switch indicating that you are working on the circuit and wait for the pulper disc to come to a complete stop before performing any cleaning procedures. Now, open the feed hood or pulper cover plate. Using a strainer or a skim tool, remove any materials floating on the water. Then open the discharge chute and sweep the remaining pulp into the waste receptacle. Remove the feed hood curtains from the curtain hooks inside the feed hood. Now, open the drain valve and drain water from the machine. After the water is drained from the pulper, scoop any remaining loose trash into a waste container. Once the pulper is free of any loose debris, use the hose to wash the inside of the pulper tank, the feed hood, and the curtains. Now, open and remove the trash box. It is located beneath the pulper tank. To open the trash box, release the retaining clips on both sides of the box, then pull the trash box straight out. Empty debris from the trash box into a waste receptacle and rinse the box clean under running water. Once clean, replace the trash box and secure it with the retaining clips. After the inside of the pulper tank, feed hood and tray, and trash box are thoroughly washed down. Remove the three water press access doors. Rinse the door interiors under running water. Using the high pressure hose, 
wash down the interior of the housing and screen. A pulp plug may be seen at the top of the water press screw. It is not necessary to remove this plug as part of the cleaning procedure. After the machine is clean, wash down the floor, close the drain valve, and replace the three water press access doors. The Hobart Waste Pulper is now ready for its next day's operation. Warning, disconnect the electric power supply at the fuse disconnect switch and place a tag indicating the circuit is being worked on before beginning any maintenance procedure. Hobart waste equipment requires very little regular maintenance. Keep motors free of dirt and their ventilation openings unrestricted. The water press drive consists of a close coupled motor and speed reducer. The motor requires no lubrication maintenance. The gears in the speed reducer operate in an oil reservoir that should be checked every six months by your local Hobart service office to maintain adequate oil level and quality. When properly used, cleaned, and periodically checked, Hobart WS waste system should require no other regular maintenance. This concludes operator training for Hobart WS waste systems. Please refer to your instruction manual if you have any additional questions regarding the use, operation, or troubleshooting of this machine, or contact your local Hobart sales and service office. Hobart WS waste equipment provides long, reliable service if used and maintained properly.